I'm going to go ahead and read Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 10 again. 8 through 10. Because this is basically what I'm talking about. <laughs> Going through other ways. And Paul, we do have audio still? Okay. Just checking. Um, and besides that, I like reading Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. Because I'm telling you something, there's a lot of people that don't like it. Because they can't, it's very hard to explain away. <laughs> That's the problem they have with it. They don't actually put it that way, but that's the problem they have with it. Because it means what it says. And it's very plain in what it says. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, actually not last week, two weeks ago, I was talking about the gifts and the different references that the scripture has for gifts given. Now, I spoke about, let's see, where is that? Because I left, I did not get to one. I uh, talked about faith, of course, being the gift of God by grace. Not of works, not of yourselves, by grace. And it is, faith is a noun. Believing is the verb. Then went on and said uh, where eternal life through Jesus Christ is the gift of God. And Jesus Christ is the gift of God. But man doesn't know. If you knew the gift of God. If you knew who you were speaking to. You'd ask. And you'd receive. But they don't know so they don't ask. And they don't ask because they don't know. Because they don't believe. Because they don't have faith. And they don't have faith because it has not been given. It may be given later to them. But they don't believe now. And that's the only part we can know about. God knows who's elect. I don't. God knows who he is going to give the gift of faith to. Those he foreknew, those he foreordained, those he chose before the, before the foundation of the world. Then we saw that the Holy Ghost is the gift of God by the promise of God to everyone the Lord our God shall call. This promise, he calls, you'll have it. He gives. And then also every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness. As I said, no fickleness. Neither a shadow of a turn. The last one here is actually in Romans 11.29. Now, I listened to Walter's message last week, and he spent a good deal of time in Romans 11. And I agree with what he said. And the reason I agree with what he said is because that's what the book says. There is a context to this verse. It is a very decided context, but there is also the truth of this verse. This is Romans 11, 29, and I'll just read this one verse right here. For the gifts plural, and calling of God are without repentance. Ooh, and look, period. <laughs> they put one in there. Paul writes some of the longest sentences I've ever read in my life. 
Paul's sentences come out in the, in the, when they put in punctuation, they come out as paragraphs. But for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Now, the context of this verse is what Walter was talking about last week. God has not forsaken his people which he foreknew. And that is Israel. Now God has not forsaken anybody which he foreknew, including Gentiles. Ever. And he never will. Because his gifts and his callings are without repentance. And his gifts and his callings are according to his promise. And his promise is according to his purpose. And his purpose is to save his people from their sins. To show forth his grace. Not our works. Anything our works is what he... What did it say? Foreordained that we should walk in them? That's because of him too. The Lord God is not finished with Israel. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. That's what this book teaches. In verse 25, just, uh, I just do want to give this for a reference for the context here. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until... That one word right there means that until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in, after that, something is going to happen. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. But only until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. After the fullness of the Gentile comes in, what does Paul say? And so all Israel shall be saved. Now, Romans 6, Paul already wrote, they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Walter spoke about that. Israelites are not necessarily the seed. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. And Walter, I got to think about that. Ishmael was a son. That's the point. Isaac was a son of Abraham, but so is Ishmael. It's according to the promise. Isaac was the promised son. Christ is the seed. But all Israel shall be saved. I agree wholeheartedly with the context of this verse. Because it comes down. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election they are beloved for the father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Because the promises of God are without repentance. The purpose of God is without repentance. God is not a man that he should repent. That's Old Testament. That's where Paul's referring. Gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And Walter, I looked that up, and I knew the scripture in my head, but I didn't know who said it. It was Balaam. Of all people, Balaam said that. Balaam may have been a reprobate, but I'm going to tell you something. What he spoke was truth. It was the word of the Lord. 
God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed. And I cannot reverse it. That gives me chills up and down my spine. I'm serious. He's blessed. I can't reverse it. He gives a gift. I can't reverse it. And he's not going to. Because he's perfect. He's not going to give you a gift that he knows he's going to have to take away from you in two weeks. And if it's up to me to keep something, I'm doomed already and he knows that. I cannot stop sinning. So if my sins would cause me to lose my salvation, I've already lost it. But my sins cannot lose his salvation. Because Christ paid for all of my sins. Sins past, sins present, sins future as far as I'm concerned. When he paid for them, they were all future. I was future because I wasn't there. But I am a creature of time. God is not. Balaam continued, He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. And I love that statement, Walter, because it didn't say there wasn't iniquity in Jacob. God did not behold iniquity in Jacob. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He sins, but the Lord will not impute it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. Now there was perverseness in Israel. And there's perverseness in us. The Lord, his God, is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And his gifts and his calling are without repentance. And you don't get his gifts without his calling. You don't get his calling without his gifts. They're both there together. This promise is unto you and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's together. But those are the words of Balaam. But they're true because they're the, Lord, the words that the Lord spake. He spoke these words to Balaam and Balaam related these words to Balak, the son of Zippor. And I do dearly love that first phrase, God is not a man. That's the biggest problem religion has right now. They're interpreting God from the perspective of a man. Their interpretation of God is from the perspective of a man. And it shows in their teaching, in their preaching, in their theology. Because man is malleable. Man is fickle. God's not. God is not a man, and man doesn't understand that. They don't. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and the nations that knew not thee 
shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel for he hath glorified thee this is Isaiah 55 seek ye the Lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon Isaiah 55 verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord my thoughts and my ways change God's don't God doesn't I don't know anything about perfection other than I know God is perfection There are times when I will leave a room to go get something and forgot what I was going for before I get there. And I have to turn back around and go back into the room I started from and remember what I was doing and then remember, oh yeah, I was going for this. That doesn't happen to God. And that's a small thing I know. But that's how corrupt I am. That's how depraved this flesh is. That's how imperfect I am. God had this book written for us. He didn't have it written down so he'd remember. I write down notes so I remember. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It's not that they're different, it's that they're better. God, if God has blessed, he doesn't unbless. I added that in my dictionary right next to unfickle. God blesses, he doesn't unbless. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. <laughs> and if God has blessed, I can't reverse it, whether it's on me or on you. And to be honest, I'm not too worried about you. I've got enough of me to worry about sometimes. Because I can't help you. But then it turns around, I can't help me. So how can I help you anyway? All I can do is read the book. And try my best to believe it. Because I have believed God has given me faith. That I can believe his word. And by his grace, I will believe his word. But God has blessed and he will not unbless. Man cannot figure out God. <clears throat> I thought about this on the way up here. There are people. Now, as a preface, I believe many things I don't quite understand. And this kind of goes back to that sign I talked about last week that's still creepy. About the, the heart has eyes that the brain knows nothing of. Okay? Well, I thought about it some more and I realized kind of... There is a saying among Armenian churches, which used to go, there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. And that's... In a manner of speaking, that's true. Book learning, just actual knowledge, does not save. Even if it's the truth, Walter, knowledge doesn't save. You have to know Christ. And you only know Christ because he's been revealed to you. 
And he's only been revealed to you because God gave you faith. And he only gave you faith because he gave you life because he chose you before the foundation of the world. It all comes from him. And there is a difference between just knowing something in your head and knowing the truth. Knowing Christ, who is the truth. There is that difference. But what that is going on from that sign and way a lot of people think, you don't have to know it in your head, you have to know it in your heart. Well, God gives eyes that see, ears that hear, but a heart that understands. You will understand some things. And no one is saved, converted, no one is a believer unless they know him. And part of that's in your head. But what they want is what they feed upon is emotionalism. It's emotion. Don't worry about your thoughts. Worry about your feelings. And buddy, your feelings can get worked up at a football game. Earl talked about that. I still get tickled at him where he'd go in the bank on Monday and if WVU lost a football game, some girl would be behind the teller or somebody else, they'd be crying because West Virginia lost a football game. That's emotionalism. It can get worked up over anything. I get emotional over the death of a pet, of a dog. But emotionalism doesn't save. Christ's redemption is true whether I feel it or not. And I believe that, Walter. People say, oh, and I've been told this. I, they, they'll say this. I can't believe anything on blind faith. <laughs> and I say, good. Well, the first two words are very important. They say, I can't. I understand, you can't. That part's true. But faith is anything but blind. Faith is never blind. Not blind at all. But to them who don't see, they think we are going on blind faith. Faith isn't blind. He does give eyes that see, ears that hear, and a heart that understands. And you do understand. And by his grace, through his word, you will grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're not getting more grace, but you can get more knowledge. Because he'll give it. It's written in his word. He's promised it to us. It's about time for me to quit. 1 Samuel 15 and verse 29 says, And also the strength of Israel will not lie or repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. The strength of Israel is God. He doesn't lie and he doesn't repent. Why? He's not a man. We lie. We don't need any help with that. We need repentance to be granted. It's a gift. But he is unchanging. I talked about it the other day. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He doesn't change, he doesn't repent, and his gifts and calling are without repentance. God has given gifts and God has called. Both of these are without repentance. Even 
to as many as the Lord our God shall call. God has not finished with Israel because all Israel shall be saved. And the fullness of the Gentiles is going to come in. And things are going to change. I'm not going into that because I don't have time. But all Israel shall be saved because God has not cast off his people which he foreknew, foreordained. There was an election of grace. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The election has obtained it. And from here we go to the expected place. And I'm not going to go, be, uh, Hebrews 11. Because there's a bunch of stuff by faith in here. But I'll just read this and I'll quit. And nothing happens, I'll be here next week and we'll do this some more. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Believing is the verb. Believing is not the substance. Faith is the substance. Believing I'm not even going to try to pronounce the Greek word again without it written down in front of me. Believing, even in the Greek, that word is derived from this noun. Faith is the substance. It results in believing. And all of those people in Hebrews 11 are said to have done all kinds of things by faith. Why? They all believed. They believed God. And that's all I'm saying for us to do. Believe God. Believe Jesus Christ who is God. You can if you will. <laughs> and you will if you can. And you can if he's given you faith. And you will if he's given you faith. Which is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And if Baptists would just repeat that enough, maybe they'd start to believe it. But I doubt it. Because it takes the faith of God. It takes the gift of God. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious gift our Lord Jesus Christ and thank you for the the precious faith you have given us and all the other gifts that are perfect that come down from you In Christ's name we pray, amen.